stopping Bluetooth stalking, MSI was hacked, and Google adds passkey support. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire from May 9th, 2023. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Let's go ahead and jump right into the news this week. A new draft specification published on the 5th details how Apple and Google want to fight unwanted Bluetooth tracking via new industry standards. Now, this paper explains lists of best practices and protocols that manufacturers can use whenever developing products products that have Bluetooth location tracking built in. Following this specification would mean an accessory would be compatible with, quote, unwanted tracking detection and alerts on mobile platforms such as iOS and Android, no matter the manufacturer. So they want to standardize the alerts for these trackers across the board. Now, given the real world cases of people finding location tracking accessories on them or in their luggage or bags, this could improve safety and privacy for individuals. Even though AirTags already have some protections in place to combat this kind of stalking, the collaborative support of multiple manufacturers would bring this same technology a step forward. AirTag alerts can be delayed as well, which can prevent a user from finding the suspect device. Now, since this is an open proposal, several other manufacturers have already shown support for the standard, including Samsung, Eufy Security, Pebblebee, Chipolo, and Tile. In order to work, the detection of an unwanted location tracking accessory would monitor and alert users based on Bluetooth crowdsourcing, GPS and GNSS location, Wi-Fi location, cellular location, and other means. But this spec would also come with a registry. Devices would be registered to an owner with data retained for 25 days minimum, and the registry would be available to law enforcement upon valid requests for data. Now, you can read the entire whole proposal over on the IETF website. The secret code signing keys used by the PC manufacturer MSI have been leaked online by threat actors who ransomware the brand last month. This was confirmed by the CEO of security firm Binarly. Binarly? I like buy gnarly because then I get to say gnarly. In a tweet who said that the Intel OEM private key leaked, Intel boot guard on the 11th gen Tiger Lake, 12th gen Alder Lake, and 13th gen Raptor Lake may not be effective. So what does that mean? Well, Intel boot guard is hardware that protects machines from tampered UFI or UEFI firmware being executed. If firmware is flagged as malicious by the boot guard, it prevents the firmware from being loaded onto a PC as it's booting up before the operating system loads. That means an attacker could sign malicious updates or deploy malicious payloads on systems and the system would not know any better. This leak includes 57 PC firmware image signing keys and the Intel boot guard private signing keys for 116 MSI devices. These keys are used across several different vendors as well, so it could impact Intel, Lenovo, and Supermicro too. Now, this leak appears to be in connection with the ransomware group called Money Message, who attacked MSI in March, and they claimed that they had stolen source code, firmware, and databases from the company. At the time, they demanded a $4 million ransom. They were not paid, so they started leaking the data. By Gnarly posted the list of affected devices from MSI via their GitHub. Biggest of shout outs to my Patreon supporters, especially my golden s'mores and their fur babies for making the show completely possible since we do not have ads on the show at all. And a huge thank you to Jim, Jamie, Skylancer, Orlando, Bruce, Jim number two, and Bite Wolf for being a part of the s'mores over at patreon.com slash Shannon Morse. That is my new Patreon page for the show. I will be posting all of the perks for patrons, including early access to this very video. So if you are currently a patron on the Threatwire page, switch on over to the new page so you don't lose access to your perks. Let's go ahead and finish out today's episode with my last top story all about pass keys. Now this is big news. We have been hearing a lot about pass keys in recent months, and last week Google started rolling out this new login standard for all of their services and platforms. 
Now with a pass key, you would not have to type in a password or use two-factor authentication or a second step in verification. Pass keys allow for a passwordless login experience and it's considered to be a major, major boost for security. In the case of Google accounts, your pass keys are linked to your devices wherever you add the account. You can unlock the account via biometrics or a pin on that device. This can help with phishing attacks, especially as there is no password to type in, so there's no password for anybody to steal. Your device has a private key signature, and when you are trying to sign into Google, Google will only receive the public key and the signature, no biometrics. Similar to iOS, pass keys will be synced in the cloud, so you can easily upgrade or switch devices too. Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Chrome OS also support pass keys. The Chrome browser in Android OS already supported pass keys way back in October of 2022, and pass keys are end-to-end -end encrypted as well. Now, currently, pass keys with Google are optional, and you will have fallback options such as a password in the event that you don't have one of the pass key devices on you. You can easily manage pass keys over at g.co slash pass keys. That will be your personal page for accessing all of your pass keys. And you may find that some are already automatically generated for you. You can always test out the pass keys yourself. Whenever you log in underneath the password text field, you will see an option to try another way to log in. And that's how you can set up your pass keys. You will choose use your pass key and follow the on-screen directions that are presented to you. Now, pass keys are not a new criteria for logging in. In fact, the standard, which is called the Web Authentication, aka WebAuthn and FIDO, has been around for quite a few years. The FIDO Alliance, which is a group of manufacturers and brands who support a standard protocol for account security, includes brands such as Google, Apple, Microsoft, and more, and all of whom have pledged to support passkeys since at least May of 2022. Google does not recommend setting up passkeys on devices that you share with other people, obviously. Some devices or operating systems and browsers are not fully supported yet, but they should be rolling out soon. Hey, I'm Shannon Morris. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the internet.